to rugby tonight on tour the first of a brand new series and this evening we kick things off at clifton rfc yes they're a good bunch here and we are in bristol the name may have changed but the passion clearly hasn't and i brought along a friend as well ugo is over there Yes, that's right, Sarah, and the atmosphere starting to build here surrounding the bar. And I'm joined by a couple of local heroes, and Stephen Lewita and Ian Madigan. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Um, Pat Lamb, before the season started, spoke about the connectivity between the community and the rugby team. And it's manifested itself in you guys training at your local rugby club, Clifton. That sends out a really strong message, surely. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, firstly, thanks for having us on the show. Um, but yeah, our, you know, in, within the team, it's um, our main goal is to inspire the community through rugby success. And you know, one of the ways of doing that is obviously by winning on the field. And it was great to get off to a winning start against uh, Bath in front of you know a full stadium. But there's many other ways we do that. You know, getting out and, and coaching um, mini rugby teams in the area, getting out, helping out with the local charities, and generally just getting involved with the community and. Um, but making sure that they feel like they're part of the club as well. Well, no doubt they're certainly feeling that way tonight. Stephen, really tough game at the weekend. How's the body and how much are you looking forward to being back at Ashton Gate this weekend against Harlequins? Yeah, definitely looking forward to getting back at home in front of my home crowd um, and observe a performance out of us and the body still pumped and bruised from the, from the weekend. A cluster of class outfit and uh, yeah, we de they definitely deserve their, their, their victory. Good man. Well, lovely to hear from the guys. So, what's coming up later on in the show? So it was another awesome weekend full of Premiership Rugby and we have some of the best bits for you. Ugo, Ian and Steve put Clifton RFC through their paces working on continuity play between the forwards and the backs. And the good folk of Clifton get first shot at the leaderboard as they take on the Smashometer. So as usual we've got no time to waste so let's kick things off with a little bit of TRY time. Cipriani, and round they go through Sharples. Gloucester coming loose in this second period. Purposeful run from Simmons, who dances with the gap, looks for the support back inside, finds Cordero, who will go through under the post. It is the Chiefs at their best. Slade drops the arm and goes round Jennings. Slade, they've got a good two on one here. Slade still going. Lovely skills fit back inside to be finished off by Maunder under the post. This is Broke the initial tackle of Berenice. And now he's on his own. Roberts has scored at one end. Tapawai back close to scoring at the other. Oh, and Kerr has got it. And Quinns have grabbed the try. And Rocket and Gurney and gets it to Flocker the singer. That is a work of artistry. Oh, it's so easy for Saracens, so easy for Lewington. And David Strettle doing what he's done for a decade and a half. to Sammy Mavinga, who decides that there's a bit of space. Open pasture for Sammy Mavinga. Inside ball to Takalua. Oh, they've carved them open here. Newcastle score. And Daly might think about the little chip over looking for Bassett. Brilliant. And this is Ford and he's done well. To Lusa Veanu. De Jong has already got one try. Oh, and he's in the mood to get another. Brilliant from the Springbok. Juan De Jong slamming his way through Leicester's defence. OK, guys, we're going to look back now with this weekend's fixtures. And we have to start, of course, with um, Gloucester Bristol at King's Hill. Um, you've had time to reflect. So what are you guys... What was the immediate reaction in the changing room? Yeah, obviously a game of two halves. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely pleased with how we um, started in the first half, came away with, I guess, the lead. But uh, full credit to, to Gloucester in, in closing the game out in front of their home crowd. Um, they were class. 
uh, we got a lot of learnings from that game. Uh, happy that, obviously not happy that we lost, but we're happy that we get take a lot of learnings er, this early in the season, so we'll definitely grow from this game. Yeah, you know, Steve touched upon it there. You properly rattled them in the opening 40 minutes. They look rattled. I mean, was it you not being able to continue that during the second half, or was it more them maybe putting their foot on the on the accelerator? Yeah, certainly. We, we did rattle them a bit, and, you know, we probably caught them on a bit of an off day in the first half, and... You know, it was testament to, you know, our line speed and defence was good, so we are putting their ball players under pressure. Um, but, you know, Gloucester are a very good side, and you can see they've been building their squad over kind of the last two or three years, and, um, you know, there's you know, a good chance that they'll be title contenders this year. So we'll, we'll learn a lot from that game at the weekend. Well, lots of positives from that game, and the dynamic duo combined really well to <laughs> set up a brilliant try. I mean, talk us through, I mean, you saw the space and then combined brilliantly on the end, right? Steve, Steve was out on the on the wing, so he got the. Uh, I was just being lazy. Yeah, but yeah. He, got the, <laughs> <laughs> he got the communication into me that there was a bit of space, so um, I just put it through, and then he worked his magic, lifted it up for for um, the wizard and the wizard of the balls. Uh, and Luke Morahan, he's he always handy man, so uh, he's always sniffing around to try, so <laughs> he finished it well. Yeah. Just, you know, Pat Lamb. What, after a game like that, does he concentrate more on the positives or more on the negatives? As a as a coach, what, what's his approach? Yeah, he's, he's very good on review. Like, he's, um, he'll go through everything we did well, and then he'll, he'll call everything else our work oh. on. So, okay. <laughs> uh, like no, it. he's very uh, very thorough in our review. Um, and it's probably, a, it's been a real strength of us, you know, for over the last kind of year and a half we, we, that we've had him. He's, um, his reviews and previews of both training and games um, are so thorough that, He's brought the um, you know the rugby education of the whole yeah. squad really up up yeah. to quite a high level. So yeah, he seems like he'd be quite a detailed you know a detailed coach. Okay, let's move on then to Wasp Leicester. A few talking points. We'll get on to the major one, uh, which was the red card, of course. But I just I think we should talk about Leicester really because given the start of the season and everything that's gone on, I think Jordan, um, Jordan Murphy would be pretty happy with just the character shown this weekend again. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a really tough fortnight for them. They lost their boss last week after one game and got absolutely hub down at Sandy Park but in the manner in which they were able to come back down to 14 men and I tell you what their key men have really stepped up George Ford I thought was brilliant last week against Newcastle Manu Tulangi stepping up George Ford again at the weekend three try assists so I think Jordan Murphy would just be pleased with the character with the fact that they've galvanized one another and they came away with too much bonus points and at the Rico you most definitely would take that should we talk about the red card then? I mean, there's been so much chat about it on social no media. Red cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys must have seen it. Um, see if we go to you first. What was your take on it? Yeah, I've seen it. And, um, I guess a little of the law, it's, it's, it's a right call. Um, obviously, we're trying to protect each other as, as players and whatnot, but I guess um, intent definitely um, has, a, has a factor to play in it. I think uh, Mads has more to talk about it. <laughs> Come on, then. Come on, <laughs> Yeah, look, it's obviously a very tricky one. Um, yeah, you know, we we want to have good spectacles every week with 15 v 15, um, and when you know when a red card happens, it makes it very difficult for the game to continue competitively. But I think with the, the rules of be, being brought in to protect the players, um, it was unfortunate. You know, you've a t really tall guy, six foot ten, tackling a shorter guy. The important thing is there is his intent is to make a legal tackle, yeah. and he's just got it slightly wrong. So lesson learned, it, I suppose. Yeah. It is tough, but I think. That's one of our points of differences in rugby is that it is a sport for all shapes and sizes and these guys are willingly go out there and put their bodies on the line. They're, they're modern day gladiators and sometimes the laws are there to protect the players from yeah. themselves. Yes, it's a harsh red card, but it needs to be implemented. And the reason is, is because we have to change attitudes. We didn't have HIA six years ago, so it's certainly new. We've got to come, come on board with it because essentially they're not just to protect these guys, to protect these guys as yeah, well who also play in the game on a Sunday so yeah. it's all about creating positive and, and good habits okay well, we could talk about that all night can we we're going to yeah. start we're going to move on um to extra sale um I'm going to leave Hugo give you a stat now Ian because he's been like this <laughs> all weekend. Go on, give the extra stat to everyone you're not very impressed of it but Extra haven't scored a point from penalties so every point they've scored this year has been through tries and conversions I mean you guys like to attack, and I guess they're probably the best out in the league. How impressed have you been with their attack? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. When you see how they play, you know, if, you, if you're playing against them and you give away a penalty on your own 10-meter line, you know, you're going to do very well <laughs> to keep them out. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're either going to have to defend for 25, 30 phases, yeah. 
um, which is obviously exhausting. Yeah. Um, and you can also, as a result of that, you're going to give away penalties again. Suddenly you're down to 14 men, yeah. and it's it's really really tough. So I think when you're playing a team like Exeter, you've got to be able to limit yourself to your team only giving away maybe five or six penalties in, in an entire match, and it's really hard to do that. And then the flip side of that, you don't contest the breakdown, and you're giving them really quick balls. So it's you know it is it is very difficult. They're they're running their system really well at the moment. In short, they're a really tough team to play against. <laughs> they're a really good rugby side. Yeah, really good. Uh, really okay, good. so um, Harlequins Bath then. Um, Harlequins, you'll be facing them this weekend. Um, I'm sure you haven't done your reviews yet and, and all of that, Jack. Certainly in the week for that. <laughs> um, but they've had a bit of an up and down, like I start at the start of the season. They were really good against Sale. Um, what do you make of them this weekend against Bath? Um, they got threats right, right throughout the board. Um, you know, they got a strong midfield, and they're showing a bit bent up way there. He's he's kind of sealed that up and, and made it his own. Uh, week one, he was great for them. Um, obviously, Bath, um, obviously the loss to us in the draw, they had to come out firing, and they were great in the weekend. You know, they really dominated, and, and they showed why you know they've been there or they're about to get again in, in the top six. Yeah, but I spoke to Paul Gascard after the game, but he said that the, they didn't warm up very well. Like, how important is that to a team doing warm up? That they well, do it, warm up for me, well? it just goes to show how much the mental aspect of defence is. Okay. Because if the guys aren't switched on, they're not going through the processes. And you know, to be that soft and to be that porous in defence, to concede five tries at home mentally they weren't quite there and often hey, your body follows your mind and if you're not that quite there mentally that's what they'll have to fix up because it'll be very tough against these boys at Ashton Gate this weekend. Right. Yeah it will be. I tell you what else is going to be pretty tough this year is a smashometer. It's a brand new season. Chippenham won last year with 114. Let's see how these guys get on. Well, rugby tonight on tour means one thing, and it's time for the Smashometer. Look at it, it's brand new, it's shiny, and the boys are about to have a go. Let's see how they get on. Sam Harrison, centre. First hit on the brand new Smashometer. Let's see how you get on, mate. Well, there's 107, everyone. Very good indeed. Ben Edwards, hooker. Let's go. That was 89! <laughs> David Hill, second row. Well, let's see what you got, pal. Oh, 77. You went to our... Uh... Tom Brantis, play half. Finally! 85! <laughs> Will Pomfrey, back three. Mate, you've got a decent set of quads on you. Come on, let's have a go! Wow! 126! Yeah! That's superb. Clifton, I tell you what, very competitive, and they've got the top score, the top of our leaderboard, because it is the first show. What an impressive score it was. 126, Will. Congratulations. Hands together for one, everyone. That was good, wasn't it? He did well, didn't he? Boy, did good. He did. That was Will, and he's one of our wingers. That'll be him for the season now, honestly. <laughs> it was pretty impressive for um, a winger, fair play. I'm here with the chairman of the club, Wynn Tingley. Wynn, thank you so much for having us tonight. We've really had a fantastic, fantastic time. And you can sense it's a pretty special club, so tell us a little bit about the history of it. Oh, I'm glad you, that you picked up on that. We love our club. This club's been going for nearly 150 years. 23rd oldest club in England, 33rd wow. oldest in the world. Okay. And I just think that, you know, we've got four senior teams, we've got inclusive rugby, we've got six or seven hundred kids now playing in the minis and juniors. Fantastic. And they love it. I know it's very early season, but how's things going so far? Well, we had a couple of changes. Changed director of rugby at the start of the season. Okay. So Matt Salter, ex-Bristol captain, okay. is now our head head coach. And we won our first match away, and then have won, and then have lost the last two. Okay. But we're hoping to change that this weekend against Worthing. But tell us very quickly. I know you've had some famous names, so list them off. List them out for me. Oh if you wow! Can. Look, we've had so many players that are now gracing the Premiership here in here at Clifton. Mitch Eady. Elish Genge, um, Andy Uren, Callum Sheedy, Mako Vonapola. Okay. He was playing here when he was 15, wow. and you could tell he was a monster then. <laughs> I 
And he still is. He still and is. I think you've got a present for us to we take We certainly back. do. I was down at the studio last week. Thank you for having me. And this is for Very the welcome. fun wall. Thank you. I I'm not even going to attempt reading that. What does that mean? Dum well, that's Latin rather than Welsh, Sarah. And so that's um, dum ludimus ludamus. And it means let's play while we play. Grab life by the throat and have a good go. I love that. I'm going to take that. Grab life by the throat. And that's what Ugo's going to try and do now as he attempts a break time challenge. Let's see how he gets on. Mads, every week we've had a break time challenge. I hear you've got a pretty decent one for me. Yeah, I've seen that. I saw the drop goal last year, so I've got to put you to, uh, to the ringer again here. In the dead ball area, okay. uh, on the touchline, see if you can curl it between the posts. Okay, well, good luck. Let me, let's see how you get on. Jeez, that is a tough one. And it's windy here. It is windy here. But you are an international 10. It should be light work for you. <laughs> Over to you now. Right, well, that's exactly how you're meant to do it. I'm going to have a little practice run. We'll see how I get on after this little break. Welcome back to Rugby Tonight, and earlier on, Ian and I, we had a little go at the break time. Hold on a second, actually, uh, after two boot changes, looking for a second kick in tee, did you get one in the end, or what happened? Well, I, I didn't take that long. Mate, it's, it went dark by the time I left you. Okay, well, let's have a look and see how I got on earlier on. Oh, gosh. See, it's not my kick in tee, you see. I'll take that! Very happy with that! So, Mads, how do you reckon I got on there? I managed to get one finally. It did take a while, but I got it over you. You yeah, you're impressed? Yeah, your legs will be stiff tomorrow, like 100 goes. <laughs> <I think> so. <laughs> I'm feeling it already. Well, guys, if you've got any challenges out there, please get in touch at Rugby tonight, at BT Sport Rugby, using the hashtag Break Time Challenge. Well, earlier on, Ian Madigan, myself, and Stephen Lewis, we got out there with Clifton Rugby Club to have a little go at a demo. Check it out. So this season I've been really impressed with how Bristol have played, especially their attack in rugby and the combination between the forwards and the attack. So we're going to set something up and just to see how the decisions are made and how the forwards really combine well with the attacks, whether it's attacking through the middle or trying to express and go out wide. So Stephen, you've got your defenders here. What are you looking for? You often see yourself in this position. So first off, Mads will tell me to, um, to carry or tell this mini group to carry. And within our group, we've got our little uh, options. So in this, in this particular situation, I'll get the ball and I run on the 45. I'm um, trying to draw in this fourth defender, and if I see any space, and I want to pull away at my third uh, third attacker here. So in this in this instance, guillotine. Um, same again. So if Matt tells me to carry, we've got options within our little mini pod here. If there's a lazy defender and an inside guy sees the option, I'm running on a 45. He's on a call inside, inside, and the ball's away. And then we got within this little mini pod, you got so many options. Yeah. So like we've got a shoulder option as well. So if you pass me the ball again, we're gonna run a shoulder. Yeah, so within our little mini pod, we know what's happening. Yeah. I'm going to run straight here, go. throw a little dummy, and yeah, give oh, my man some space there. So, uh, and tell us, because not every forward is going to be as comfortable on the ball as you are. So do you want the ball stationary, or do you want it out in front of you running onto it? Um, it depends on what you're going to run. So if I'm running a shoulder ball, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I definitely want it stationary. Okay, so cool. your communication definitely counts. So um, if Mads wants the ball as well, so if it comes through my hands and I'll tell him, hey, I'm stationary, I want the ball stationary because then I have to filter it to Mads. Or if I, wanna, if I wanna carry myself, push me. But the communication between me and you from nine to as a ball carrier, uh, that's pretty crucial. Okay, cool. We've done a really good job here sitting down all the defense. We've congested them. We now want to see how you communicate and Mads, how you run things if you want to expand your game. What are you looking for? Yeah, so if it's on the later phase, can you know, maybe seventh, eighth, ninth phase, you might have, you know, defenders caught up in a rook over there. Yeah more guys caught up here and they still cover in the backfield and they're getting a bit light in the wide channel so i can then call make a call to steve um let's say nike at the back so he then plays to me and i've got two forwards ready here if i want to change the point of contact and run into their you know 50 60 defender i can hit them and, and they can hit it up or i get a i could then get a call from our center letting me know that there's space out in the wider channel which is today yourself yeah so let's say you're calling for it yes i then play to you and then you play 
to the edge Sweet. and then you can be back into what Steve explained earlier those guys can then run over there assess the options with the you know close to the rook see if the team has, has pushed in too tight and then you can outrun them again on the open side and if these guys have done their job and sat down the defenders it's so important for you to then keep on top of them so in terms of your depth and communication what angles of running are you looking for as a 10 and, and these guys outside? Yeah, of course. And I'm sure, you know, uh, guys and girls at home have heard a lot of, uh, you know, the um, commentators talking about the engage. So yeah. the engage is basically how close the person in possession with the ball wants to go to the defender. So if you go right up to the defender and then pass the ball on, that defender is now out of the game. Yeah. It's very hard for him to go and defend someone else. Whereas if you pass that ball early, and he's you know two or three yards away from you. He can then shuffle on and help maybe the defender outside him, or uh, and potentially make a, you know an important tackle further out the field. So that's where you know the likes of Danny Cipriani playing right on the line is uh, you know a real strength of his. Well, it's been a strength of you guys this season. Thank you so much to Clifton, Ian, and to Stephen. Brilliant play. That's exactly how you combine really good attacking play between forwards and backs. Good, enjoy that demo. Yeah, Clifton guys are great, and uh, Stephen and Mads were, were fantastic. Mads, <laughs> we're like that. Your besties now, are you? <laughs> An hour in his company and his besties. Uh, okay, so the Bristol lads will be busy this weekend against Harlequins, and we've also got a fantastic lineup for you on BT Sport. This is what you've got to look forward to. Stand by for a little bit of a show. He's on his bike, he's on the way to the line. Exeter up and running in fine style. That is unstoppable. Brilliant finish. A moment of magic. Absolutely extraordinary. What a performance from the champions. Cipriani over the top. Oh, sharp balls. Okay, guys, let's look ahead to this weekend then. Um, and we have to start with uh, your fixture against Harlequins at Ashton Gate. Um, so what's the plan at the weekend, given that Bath <laughs> attack caused them a fair bit of problems? Uh, the plan is to go out there and try and get a win. Um, <laughs> Apart from that. Simple as that. Uh, I want to like, go out there and, and try and play some simple rugby. Um, you know, I think the uh, last couple of weeks uh, we've kind of gone away from that. So uh, we'll play simple, play our fundamentals. Uh, we do that right. Then generally, you know, we come up with a result. I'm uh, looking forward to playing in front of our home crowd again, so yeah. definitely excited about that challenge ahead. Yeah, the atmosphere and opening weekend at Ashton Gate was amazing. Um, Luke's, um, we're in Newcastle on Friday night, yep. Newcastle Exeter. Um, how do you see that one going? Is it a repeat of last season's semi final, of course? Yeah, it should be a really tough game, I think. You look to last year's result in Newcastle, beat Exeter 28 20. However, no one's managed to deny Exeter maximum points. Newcastle getting their first victory of the season. They'll be bored by that. Should be, yeah. should be a very decent game. Yeah, we'll be um, in sale on Saturday. And then the final game of the weekend, Sarri's Gloucester. And I guess, Ian, we have to talk to you about the, the 10 matchup. Danny Cipriani, Owen Farrell. That's some battle, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a really competitive game. Uh, both sides gone into it undefeated so far this season. Um, and both playing really well. So I think... You know, the battle of the two tens will probably come down to who gets on top in the pack, and it's going to be two really physical um, forward packs going against each other. Um, and, you know, I think that, that's a game that's going to go right down to the wire. I'm sure it will. Ian, Steve, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We've had a really good night, haven't we, Ix, in the Clifton Rugby Club. That's it from us then. We'll be back in the studio next weekend where Rocky Clark, England's most capped rugby player, and Brad Shields will be the guest. So make sure you join us then. From all of us here, bye for now. Oh,